Well, good morning. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share with you. I'm Mike Yoder. I'm the Executive Director of Associated Ministries, and it's a joy to be with you again. I have a warm place in my heart for the August Day congregation because this church and its members have been involved in many ways over the years with Associated Ministries and in service to this community. So thank you for being people who live compassionate lives of service and care. You truly are an inspiration to me. I'm going to diverge just a bit from my prepared message first and just say, just when you thought 2020 couldn't get any crazier, epic wildfires break out and our air becomes toxic to breathe. Who's had enough already? Well, you know, Friday was the six-month anniversary of the National Declaration of the COVID-19 pandemic, and if you're like me, you'd hoped we'd be farther along uh, in overcoming this by now. You know, this version of life that we're currently navigating is still actively in process. We're not nearly at the end of it yet, despite how much all of us may want it to be over. You know, there's no perfect way to go through a season like this. this uh, we must give ourselves and others grace to figure out how to navigate such unprecedented times. You know, endurance doesn't mean driving ahead relentlessly, pushing away the pain, but rather drawing it in and growing from it. We need to embrace our limitations. Zoom fatigue is real, my friends. Trying to keep everything just like it always was is damaging to the soul. Rather than focusing on the things we've lost, we must also focus on the things we still have, and even the things, the new things that we've gained. You know, grief is isolating. We often feel we're the, we're, that the grief we're carrying is ours alone. We need to remind ourselves that we're grieving together, that we need to be on a path of healing together, and that the struggles we're having are normal reactions to abnormal situations. Self compassion is essential, and especially now. Hey, even Jesus took time for self-care, and it is good enough for him. Well, thank you for that uh, extra thing. I want to go into the main message that I wanted to share with you today that I've been thinking about for a while. It was actually last fall that I heard a very inspiring sermon that was delivered by Pastor Julie Johnson of Fircrest Presbyterian Church, and I asked her if I could share the theme of it again sometime. So because I'm not a pastor or a theologian, uh, that's what you're going to get from me today, a borrowed sermon. But you know, I think it's important to take note of any message that uh, you're still thinking about long after you first hear it. And in light of the unprecedented times we're living through navigating this pandemic the, and the virus of racial injustice, the being in the midst of this divisive political landscape, the principles of Pastor Julie's message that I heard all the way last fall came to my mind when I was considering what I should share with you this morning. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's look back at the early part of the Old Testament. In the book of Exodus, we encountered the dramatic story of God's work to free the Israelite people from slavery in Egypt. Key to this story are the plagues that God uses to demonstrate his power and authority over even the most repressive of regimes. There are some bold people in this story. Pharaoh, for one, is bold. Pharaoh presides over a regime that is holding hundreds of thousands of Israelites in slavery. And Pharaoh's heart is hard. Pharaoh refuses to let the Israelites go. Justice has unraveled under his leadership. But Moses is also bold. Moses has his own backstory of call and doubt and commissioning. And now Moses is courageously following God's plan to stand up for justice for the Israelite people. He is demanding what is right. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, let my people go. You know, God's plan is always for liberation and justice. And Pharaoh's system is a broken one. Moses boldly works with God, pressing onward in spite of the repeated no's. But we learn that Pharaoh can't stand being told that he is not the ultimate authority. He even makes some self-destructive choices in response to some of the plagues, like having his magicians turn the Nile into blood also, just to show that he could do that too. 
That is evidence of leadership based on a narcissistic, uncritical ideology. You know, repressive regimes always respond this way to the demand for freedom. A repressive regime will try to silence such demands. But through the faithfulness and obedience of Moses, God reveals and affirms that he has a universal concern for all people. But we need to acknowledge that there is damage in the process. As Pharaoh's heart remains hard and justice continues, Pharaoh's grip on control and power eventually unravels, but until the night that the Israelites actually leave Egypt, they continue to be enslaved. Repressive regimes and brutality that characterizes them are powerful, and we must not turn away from people living under their authority. Which brings me to my central focus for this message today, which is the focus of our work at Associated Ministries. Most of us are more acutely aware than ever that homelessness is a demonstrating reality for far too many of our neighbors here in Pierce County, as it is in many places. Economic instability from the COVID pandemic means that even more people are unable to afford safe places where they and their families can live. The effects of homelessness on physical, mental, and emotional health are far reaching, impacting children and families, not just today, but far into their futures. And while we have no Pharaoh, quote unquote, overseeing a system that perpetuates homelessness, I think it's fair to characterize our nation's inability to care for people experiencing homelessness as a system in which justice has unraveled. Our government and economic systems purport to offer freedom and justice for all, but even before the pandemic, our system was already causing an ever increasing income and wealth gap. And one of the effects of this inequality is homelessness. People of faith understand that the ultimate purpose of God is to bring about justice and abundance for all people. And like Moses, we must also recognize that we have a role in working with God to bring about his dream of compassionate care for all people. The exodus happened, yes, by the power of God, but by the power of God working through the willingness of Moses, through the willingness of human initiative and courage and resilience. It's easy for those of us who have enough or more than enough to turn and walk into our homes and let our system of inequality maintain itself. But our God calls us to more. We know that because of the Exodus story. You know, one of the ways that systems like Pharaoh's maintain themselves <clears throat> is by cultivating a theology of scarcity an underlying belief that there isn't enough for everyone, that there isn't enough love, there isn't enough freedom, there isn't enough food, there isn't enough housing for everyone. In systems like Pharaoh's, people are afraid of losing what they have. In systems like Pharaoh's, people will do everything they can to maintain their well-being at the expense of others. But that isn't the theology that characterizes our God. From beginning to end, the scriptures tell us the story of a God of abundance, the story of a God who created the universe and all that is in it and called it good, the story of a God who brought Israel out of bondage and provided for them. This is the truth of our God who invites us to hope each day, no matter what we hear on the news. We are invited to an active hope, doing what we can to speak truth, to power against unjust systems, to be kind to neighbors, and to protect our planet from harm, and to simply love one another in all that we do. The Exodus story tells us that the future will not be determined by those who live in fear, and that their power and wealth will be taken away, that their power and wealth will be taken away. The future does not be, will not be determined by narcissistic, fearful leaders. The future will be determined by our God, the God of goodness and abundance. <clears throat> Following the God of that's our story. But how do we live out that story? Right here in Gig Harbor in Pierce County, right now in the midst of the multiple crises we face. Well, unfortunately, my sharing of these inspiring thoughts from Pastor Julie isn't likely to be an adequate substitute for the voice of God in your life this morning, issuing you a call like Moses received in Exodus. But I do believe that God is calling you. And even if you feel inadequate to respond, as Moses did, I assure you that he can use you too. You may say, but I'm not Moses, to which 
I'd say, of course you aren't, but God is still God. For the past few years, I've been sensing a growing movement of awareness and involvement by congregations in our community's crisis of homelessness. Some 400 different individuals representing more than 70 different faith communities in Pierce County have attended one or more of our community quarterly meetings, the gatherings that Associated Ministries host four times each year, originally in person, but now on Zoom. We convene these meetings in partnership with other homeless and housing service providers working in Pierce County with the goal of creating an energizing space to gather regularly to learn about, discuss, and take action on the crisis of homelessness. I invite you to join us online for our next meeting, which is coming up this Thursday, September 17th, beginning at 5 p.m. You can sign up to attend on our website at associatedministries.org. You know, one of the meetings that we held in person last fall, we talked about being in service to one another and to our community and how that's a lot like walking by faith. The truth is, is that we often don't know the significance of decisions we make to meet the needs of others. Yet we need to believe that there are ripple effects of our gifts and that they are able to actually change the course of another person's life. Imagine for a moment that something as simple as a pair of donated socks and shoes could make a difference in the journey of a young person facing homelessness. Could you envision that because her feet were warm, thanks to your donation, she made the decision not to pursue entering a harmful situation because her feet were freezing? An actual example of being in service without knowing the impact of your decision in advance happened when one attendee at a recent community quarter meeting invited a friend, and that person happened to know another person with some resources, and they were able to build a home for a young person. Another actual example, a couple that was invited to a meeting listened to a presenter during it and learned of the need for a van to transport homeless youth. A few weeks later, the Beacon Youth Shelter in Tacoma received a donated van from a local church. A friend of a friend of a friend can create the connections needed to bring about a solution that impacts homelessness. We need to recognize that all of the successes, big and small, that result from us coming together as a community belong to us all. So keep participating in rallies, keep donating to shelters, keep contacting your elected leaders to advocate for policies that protect the vulnerable, keep encouraging others to attend gatherings like our community quarterly meeting. You may never know the impact that your decision to serve will have on others, but sometimes we just need to go by faith and believe that we are making a difference. As people of faith, we must keep working to build a larger network of people that will create even more ripple effects, which will create even more impact. So let me leave you with this thought. God doesn't always speak to us in ways we expect. There are numerous examples of that in scripture, including Balaam, Jacob, and others. And getting back to our story from Exodus, Moses certainly didn't expect to hear God's voice coming from the fiery bush in the desert. But you probably remember from this story that God didn't speak until Moses decided to investigate. God made the first move, but it was up to Moses to engage him further. God had something to say, but only if Moses wanted to hear it. So what about you? Have you ever had a burning bush experience? God often speaks to us at key junctures in our lives through the voices of others or through events or encounters. God could be trying to speak to you through almost any situation, from extraordinary to ordinary. Maybe that nagging feeling you have in your gut every time you drive past a person experiencing homelessness isn't just indigestion. Burning bushes show up in many forms, but if we investigate what God is trying to tell us through them, they tend to all have one thing in common. They're life-changing. They rarely make life easier stop, to tune in to what God is saying, and to boldly follow him. You know, there are hundreds of our neighbors who will be sleeping unsheltered on the streets of our community this very evening. And some of them 